It's time to take a coffee break now. We're starting with one simple swap people are making to save money at the grocery store. We all love saving money, yes. right? So people have been picking up their grocery store's private label items more often for things like chips and Coke. So now stores are stocking up. So according to the New York Times, retailers like Walmart and Aldi have been adding more store-owned goods to their shelves and sales are apparently booming. Supply chain experts say well-known food companies have been raising prices to cover for higher ingredients and labor costs. So it makes sense that consumers are willing to try out cheaper options. Some Walmart branded items like cereals are 75% cheaper than popular alternatives, so it is easy to save a lot on your shopping. I shout out to my mom, she did this when we were younger. She also was the one in line with all the coupons and everyone <laughs> behind her got upset, but that's okay because now I really appreciate it. It's getting so expensive. Yeah. And I opened a bag of Doritos the other day and I felt like it, there were like three chips. Yeah, what happened? It was exactly. supposed to be like 20 yeah. in there. And, and I think the store brands are made by some of the Sometimes other they they are. companies. And so it's basically the same great. thing. Like, yeah. like two buck Chuck at Trader Joe's. Yes. Well, it's really kind of the Trader Joe's effect, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. everything they sell is essentially their own brand. Right. Right. And I think people realize that it tastes the same. Right, exactly. Right. Why pay more? Right. You know, another and hot there's tip. more in the bag too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another hot tip that my mom taught me, always shop the outside aisles because that's where the sales are. Yeah, and those manager specials, you know, remember when they put sell by, mm -hmm. that's just a date where it's, you know, the best to sell it by then. It doesn't mean that if it's one day past right. that suddenly it's stale and you're going to get sick. That's mm -hmm. on your Too Good to, oh, to Go app. Remember you did that story? Yes. So I just saw that the other day. We mm -hmm. did it. Thank you to you. No problem. <laughs> we got something that was about to go bad, but it was great. You don't yeah. have to yeah. throw it out. Yeah. Right? I mean, oh if it has goodness. mold on it, throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk all day about that. So many ways. So, so many hot tips here. <laughs> Uh, I think this is me, right? <laughs> you know, there's another area where consumers are cutting back to make ends meet, entertainment. As the Wall Street Journal put it, puts it in a new article, it's just getting too expensive to have fun. Bah humbug, right? So much that 26% of Americans have completely cut live entertainment out of their budgets. Concerts, sporting events, theme park tickets, they're all gonna cost a lot more now than they did before the pandemic, with those prices growing at a faster rate than those of food and gas in the same amount of time. Now I will say the Biden administration has really made it a point to go after the junk fees yeah. that yeah. raise a lot of those prices. You know, I just bought some concert tickets and you're like, oh great, they're you know 200 each, which and then still a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like the convenience fee, yep. the service fee, mm -hmm. the this, and it adds up. up. But you and I yeah. talked about this. I I just don't know how we have a middle America anymore. It used to be that yeah. a family of four, right. one parent could work and you could still go to Disneyland yes. or have that one vacation or mm -hmm. go to a concert. Yep. And I just don't see how people can do it. Well, I just booked Disney for my girls' birthdays in November. We haven't been since pre-pandemic. Five of us, a thousand dollars. I was gonna say, I don't even my wanna goodness. know that. A thousand dollars for expensive. one day, one park, folks. Wow. I got goodness. the cheapest that there was. And that's without food. Oh, and yes. And yes. And right, I'll be smuggling that all into my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you will. I, I will. I will. I will. Um, there's a lot of resources being poured into studying mental health at colleges across the country. We talk about this a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but most people don't have access to academic journals. So Harvard University is trying to bridge that gap by working with TikTok influencers who can share their content online. I love that. I love this too. The university has selected a group of creators who focus on mental health and brief them on their research for them to share in their own unique way. Oh. The Harvard team behind this project says influencers were 3% more likely to share content about the core themes of their research. And while that might seem kind of small, it amounted to 800,000 more views on wow. their findings wow. so far, which is That's great. A big yeah. significant mm -hmm. impact. Plus they can put it in like layman's terms, yeah, right? Exactly. And talk to their audiences the way they talk. Well, you know? and give it to a generation who may not be able to afford some of the resources that are out there. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Social media this, isn't all bad. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, this is a good way to influence the younger generation for sure, because they have these resources, probably someone that they follow and they know and they like their content. And then they're actually seeing stuff that's factual and research is back and fact is important right because right? so many yes. people are getting their news from social media and so Absolutely. often it's disinformation right. so that's great that you have Harvard kind of controlling it yeah. so that it's accurate yeah, yeah for sure um, giving kids a little room to learn and explore by themselves is of course important but Turns out most parents aren't actually letting that happen. Yeah. So yeah, a new study found <laughs> helicopter parenting is a lot more common than people think. A majority of parents with kids between the ages of nine and 11 don't let their kids stay home alone. That they don't young, leave their, let the kids leave their side of grocery stores. They don't let them walk over to a nearby friend's house. So 
This practice goes against the level of freedom most parents think their kids should have in theory. And parents say they're just overly cautious because they worry that something might happen if they let their kids out of their watch or they simply don't think they're ready to be on their own, which I understand. I guess I thought helicopter parenting was a little more extreme than that. No. Right? Wait, well, I have a question. I, I, yes. Sorry, nine, nine to 11, is that an age that you let kids stay at home? Well, here's because the deal. that seems young yeah. to me, but I don't have kids. It depends on the child. Doug's son is nine, your girls are nine. Mm -hmm. We would never let him no. stay home alone. But at 10, I was babysitting other children. So was yes. I. So Babies. was I. But those, yes. not to make us old, but those days were a little bit different, it well, seems like, see, than what we're dealing the thing, with now. They aren't really. No. If okay. you look at you like, look at the, the rate of kidnapping mm -hmm. and all and these crime. other things that we as parents worry about, they're really not any more prevalent. We hear about them more because the way we disseminate information right. with social media. I will say I was much more guarded of my firstborn by the time my twins came. <laughs> no, I got <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <laughs> but I do try to give them some independence. Like I like them to go and order their own yeah. stuff at Starbucks mm -hmm. yeah. and I'll stay outside. You know, you want to give them some independence so right. they're not so sheltered. But also and, I worry and about able people judging people. me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like letting my kids go in. I worry that someone thinks I'm a bad parent because so many people do helicopter parent. And right. I feel like you're never a bad parent if you care. If you're trying to yes, figure it out. Say, if you worry about attention. being a bad parent, you're, you're not a bad parent. Not exactly. A bad parent. Very good yeah. But that, that is a fine line between giving them their independence mm -hmm. and also keeping them safe. <laughs> Give you guys so much credit. I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> I would be that helicopter parent. Where are you going? What do you doing? Oh, I think the pandemic yeah. changed some things yeah. too though, yeah. right? We were home with them all the time, but now we're like, leave. <laughs> yeah. She's like, go, go. please. Go. 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 go to your friend's house 13 miles away. Yeah, exactly. I'll come pick you up Here's later. a bus ticket. <laughs> right. All right, that's Marcy. today's coffee break. Here's a bus. CBS News Los Angeles, your local news, streaming wherever, whenever.